Bloody Bracken! What's going on everyone? So welcome to another doubleheader review. That's right, I'm a bit behind on 2021 films, so I'm gonna be talking about two films that I saw recently, The Protégé and Remnants. I'll be talking about both of these movies and obviously non-spoiler fashion. So enough exposition, guys. Let's get started. So the first one I'll be talking about is The Protégé. This is directed by Martin Campbell, stars Michael Keaton, Maggie Q, and a slew of other actors. Uh, one in particular that I didn't know was in this movie, but to be fair, I had no clue about this movie really until recently. And I had no idea what the premise itself was. And I have to say, right off the bat, those actors that I did mention, they did a great job. Um, I thought their chemistry was very palpable. Um, it was very fun, to be honest. I, I really enjoyed their scenes together. But more importantly, I think that it's also worth noting that the cinematography is drenched in, like, blue, pink, and red. And it's very effective. I thought it really, really worked in the, in the tone of the movie. Because the tone is, for the most part, pretty serious. So I thought that those colors were very, very, very much so warranted. I really liked it. There's also a couple action scenes here and there that I did find to be diverting, definitely fitting. Sound mixing per usual of an action movie is really good. Um, and then the ending also was quite ambiguous, which I personally liked. Um, some might not see it as ambiguous. I personally did. But I did like this movie in those regards. But I can't lie, I do feel quite mixed about this movie because for all those positives I just mentioned, it does have, unfortunately, a lot of cliches of the genre. And those cliches aren't really able to be subverted or honestly rise above those cliches. Like you have story and characters that honestly fall flat. Like I feel like the actors are obviously giving it their all, but they're just not able to really make it mesh. And it doesn't help also that the script itself feels a bit disjointed. It has it where there's like an opening scene of like a flashback, and then there's another flashback towards the end of the second act. And in my eyes, I think that that flashback in the second act should have honestly been placed right with the first act, like that flashback. I think it would have helped a bit, but even with that being said, it doesn't explain the fact that there is an over, over, over abundance of exposition in this movie, and it just does not work. A lot of it has it where characters are talking to each other and they're explaining something that the other character already knows. And I feel like that kind of exposition really takes me out of a movie, and I, I know some people that are also kind of like that, but it definitely left that kind of feeling for me because I feel like when you're telling exposition, it should be that you're telling it to another character that doesn't necessarily know about it. It makes sense. I think Minority Report, like Colin Farrell, like Tom Cruise is literally explaining stuff to Colin Farrell in that movie. And it makes sense because Colin Farrell was a fish out of water. He's never really been in that scenario. But with this, when you have characters that are literally in the same boat, same scenario, know the stakes and everything, but the one is explaining it to the other, it just kind of feels disingenuous. And that's just it, this movie feels disingenuous. It really doesn't work in those regards. I think that it works in terms of the filmmaking itself, the technical aspects, you know, the score. The score is not amazing or anything and not memorable, but it definitely was fitting. The sound mixing, as I mentioned, was really good, um, per usual of an action movie. But again, I just can't help but think about those negatives, which is why I feel mixed about this movie. If you've seen this movie and you like it, I definitely can see why, but for myself, it's a pretty forgettable movie that, you know, technical as technical achievements aside, which I shouldn't even really say achievements, that's a little bit too over achievement for myself giving it to it. Given the technical aspects, it's worth noting that that makes it rise a little bit above the disappointment nature. So that's why I'm gonna give it a fair 2.7 out of five star rating for the protege. So yeah, barely misses the hot sauce rating, but I'm not gonna remember this movie in like a day. I already forgot it pretty much. But um, yeah, that's my thoughts on the protege. Next up, the movie is Remnants, which is directed by Lisa Joy. She is the creator of Westworld, which I own uh, season one on 4K, season two on 4K, and I do also own season three on 4K, but it's in the other room. The reason why I'm not bringing it out is because I still have to open season three and actually rewatch it. Um, I wasn't the biggest fan of season three, but I got it for like $15 in 4K on Amazon, so I, I couldn't resist, and I do want to give it a second chance. But Lisa Joy is someone I'm a big fan of. She is married to Jonathan Nolan. Jonathan Nolan I'm also a big fan of. So seeing that she brought a bunch of characters, you know, actors from Westworld to this movie, as well as the composer and cinematographer, pretty pumped. And the premise itself, I did see the trailer, and I wasn't really able to make out what the premise was exactly. I was like, is this a noir? Is this a romance? Is this a thriller? Turns out it's all those genres combined, um, but I was pretty pumped for this movie, I'm not gonna lie. You know, even though I did see that it got low ratings, I was like, it's a Lisa Joy movie, I'm probably gonna really like it. And I have to say, I, I felt overall pretty mixed about it. Similar, honestly, to The Protégé, this is a movie that, it has really good technical aspects. I mean, the opening scene of Remnants is incredible. I, it reminded me a lot of Tron Legacy, which, you know, was kind of nostalgia, honestly, for myself, because 
Tron Legacy kind of is one of the movies that got me into cinematography. So it was kind of interesting to see that Remnants had an opening scene where it's just going over the water and it's just slowly showcasing the passing of time. In addition to that, also showing that it, there's no lights to then lights. I was very impressed with that opening scene. I thought it was incredible. And that wasn't the only scene that was really good either. Throughout the rest of the movie, we are introduced to an incredible color palette, really good lighting. It really set the mood, honestly, for myself. So again, props goes to the cinematography. I also thought the acting was pretty solid. There's nothing bad per se about the acting, but there definitely was a little bit more desire for myself. But I still think that everyone did a good job for what they were going for. Um, and I liked the score. Uh, my boy Raymond, who also did obviously Westworld and Game of Thrones scores, I thought he did a great job, honestly, too, for the scores. And then on top of that, I do think that it's also worth mentioning that sound mixing is very strong. I watched this in the IMAX theater, and it really sounded good. I really liked it, especially during the couple action scenes, which I wanted to mention those action scenes. There's not many in the slightest. So if you go into this movie expecting like an action-heavy movie, you're going to be disappointed. But if you are in the mood for a movie that does rely a lot on philosophical exposition, this movie might be for you. But for myself, I'm a huge fan of noir. I'm a huge fan of mysteries. Those are probably two of my favorite genres. But watching this movie, it really, really felt like I was at a distance. I felt like I couldn't connect to this movie in the slightest. I felt like I've seen this premise done in many, many better noir films. And I couldn't help but think about that. You know, when you watch a movie and it's able to you know, obviously surpass those, you know, initial standards of, oh, I've seen this movie before. That's when you know it's good. But when you are thinking to your mind, oh, it's similar to this movie and it's not able to rise above those standards in terms of like being able to then constantly think about like, hey, this is obviously something that's very, very similar to this movie. I think that that's when a movie can work. But unfortunately, Remnants, it wasn't able to rise above that. And not only that, this movie, you know, honestly, like the protege, even worse than the protege, it relied a lot on exposition. Like, a lot. You have Hugh Jackman's narration. In addition to Hugh Jackman's narration, which I do get is a staple of noir, but I feel like when a, a normal noir from the 40s does it, I feel like it definitely fits the story and everything. Here, Hugh Jackman, as much as I love him, I just couldn't couldn't help but be distracted any time that he would speak via narration. In addition to that, when there isn't narration, there's Hugh Jackman literally saying exactly what we as the audience know because we just previously visually saw it. But he's like, oh, he's then given us exposition that we should know because we literally just heard it. And it just kind of feels disingenuous. It feels like Lisa Joy isn't able to trust us in the audience, which, again, just knowing the fact that she did Westworld, it's kind of a shame knowing that because, again, this movie should work. It is a movie that is filled with many, many references to other movies in addition to also being many different genres. But unfortunately, I, I sat back and I just I couldn't really get into this movie. I found the romance to be extremely dull. And honestly, the ending too, I thought was a slap in the face. I thought that it honestly also sent like a pretty bad message. But that's just me personally. Um, Remnants, if you like this movie, I can definitely see why. Like I said, I do like the technical aspects. Maybe I'll watch this in a decade from now and I'll find myself actually liking it. But for now, in 2021, August of 2021... I can honestly say I wasn't a big fan of this movie and I feel quite mixed, which is why I'll be giving this a two and a half and a five star rating, which for those like a hot sauce rating, uh, gets the good old nothing. Because again, it is under three out of five stars. Sorry, uh, sorry, Lucy Joy. I honestly thought I would actually give you a hot sauce rating. But yeah, um, these are two movies that again, I gave pretty similar ratings and uh, yeah, it's a shame. But guys, let me know your thoughts in the comment section below of both movies or maybe one or two of them. Let me know down below and as always, hope the subscription, Notification bell and I'll uh, get you guys later.